Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. Now we've got a little rally starting here in the Bitcoin. You can see that a little while ago uh, today we had about a 4,500 Bitcoin purchase order that came in. You can see how much larger that spike is than the uh, up and down normal motions. Got a little bit a little bit more buying on a breakout here and then another big buy here so the Bitcoin is trying to rally if we get out to the let's get out to the four hour chart you can see on the four hour we're starting to get a breakout across that moving average so we're looking for a moving average crossover as we go further out you can see that uh, that's finding support. It's not finding support at the low prices, which are going to be about 63, 54, and 50, but it is finding support right at these candlesticks. So if we do get a crossover of this moving average here, that's going to take a move of about 100 to actually get a crossover confirmation. Uh, that could be a bottom. Now, if we start to look at the depth here, of course, if we go all the way out, uh, looking at the other day, we spiked all the way up to 150,000 total Bitcoins offered. We're down to 130,000 and uh, up to that, let's just go up to that 100 price here. We've got about 37,000. If we go up to 150, we're at about 100,000 offered. So there's a lot of Bitcoins for sale, but they're the vast majority of the bitcoins that are for sale are for sale above a hundred now on the bid side you can see we've got about sixty five thousand bid at fifty five and about thirty thousand bid at sixty so it's still pretty thin here at the margins but it does appear that there's some buying coming in now i wanted to talk about this asic minor controversy it's been going around a lot of people talking about it and I have quite a different take on that but before I do that I want to go over and uh, take a look at the story about the Winklevoss twins and uh, this is an interesting story uh, I'm initial my initial reaction is of course since they're universally hated uh, I would tend to wonder maybe if they're right but uh, when we dig deeper into this and think about it we'll see what this plan is and and why it may be uh, in my mind the beginning of some type of sabotage of the Bitcoin so let's read a little bit of this Bitcoin has been promoted as an alternative cryptocurrency that exists outside the realms of government central banks now two backers of the digital money are seeking to bring Bitcoin into the investing mainstream if they win the approval of the United States government. So they're going to need government approval to get this ETF. Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, the twins best known for their part in the history of Facebook, filed a proposal with securities regulators on Monday that would allow any investor to trade Bitcoins just as if they were stocks. Well, that's not true. It, they're not trading Bitcoins. It's an ETF. We'll see that below. The plan involves an exchange-traded fund, which usually tracks a basket of stocks or a commodity, but in this case would hold only Bitcoins. It is part of a broader effort to remove the stigma hovering over Bitcoin and other online money endeavors, which have faced a barrage of regulatory questions and enforcement actions, recently the world's largest trading, etc. The proposal from the twins who already have sizable Bitcoins holdings is an audacious one. The Winklevoss Bitcoin Trust could send digital money from the realm of computer programmers, internet entrepreneurs, and a small circle of professional investors like themselves into the hands of retail investors, virtually anyone with a brokerage account. The trust brings Bitcoin to Main Street and mainstream investors to Bitcoin, said Tyler Winklevoss co-founder of math-based asset services which would operate the proposed fund quote it eliminates the friction of buying and reduces the risks associated with storing bitcoin while offering similar investment attributes to direct ownership 
Their proposal has the advantage of coming from the desk of Kathleen Moriarty, a lawyer at Catton Muchin, who played a leading role in the creation of the first exchange-traded fund and popular gold-silver-backed ETFs. So let's compare this to gold and silver-backed ETFs. Now, I've pointed out for a long time on my silver channel that it's my opinion that the purpose of the gold and silver ETFs was nothing more or less than to try to divert investment demand from physical gold and physical silver into a piece of paper that represents physical gold and physical silver. So uh, as these very, very rare metals are beginning to be scarfed up by investors around the world, especially with India uh, trying to stop their citizens from buying gold and uh, delivery problems around the world. Uh, a lot of the investment demand for these precious metals has been diverted into these ETFs. Now, for the most part, you can't take delivery of the underlying asset with the silver ETF. I think it's like 10,000 ounces or some ridiculous amount. So it's not like you can just decide, well, I bought this much, now I want my silver. Go ahead and send it to me. That's not how it works. Uh, the only redemptions and allegedly redemptions are very large funds, etc. So that's going to be one of the key issues with an ETF is can you redeem the underlying asset if you decide to cash in your shares? Now, that's a question I don't know, and that's very difficult with the Bitcoin. Uh, they certainly could do it if they chose to do it, and for in my mind, that's going to be the absolutely critical factor is are they going to offer redemption of the Bitcoins anytime someone decides to cash out? The other question, of course, is are they actually going to have the Bitcoins for every share purchased and how are they going to prove that they have the Bitcoins? We know with the ETFs, there's really no way of knowing whether the gold and silver that are allegedly in those ETFs is actually there. And that's a very, very large problem. It's not like it's logistically impossible to do so you could have numbered bars and of course they issue the bar lists that have multiple anomalies with them but uh, as Jason Hommel has pointed out you could do a video of the vault showing the numbered bars etc now what that would be with Bitcoin I really can't say it would take some deep thinking to think about how are you going to authenticate and verify the actual holdings of the Bitcoin trust. I guess there would be a way if uh, you could display the wallet address and the transactions related to it. Uh, I just haven't thought it through enough to, to know. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's clear that uh, if this were to be a success and it were above board, then this would be a way for a large number of investors who can't get their money into Bitcoin, whether that has to do with uh, financial restrictions or whether it has to do with just uh, a learning curve problem. This would open the door for a tremendous amount of money to flow into the Bitcoin if it were above board. Uh, then again, if it weren't above board, this would end up being a gigantic diversion, just as it has been with gold and silver, from keeping real funds flowing into those assets but being diverted into a, a fake sort of pool. So I'm going to say the jury is still out on this and I think if the Winkle Boss twins are serious they could uh, provide a lot of checks and balances so that people could know that this thing is legit. And the next story I want to talk about here is the ASIC miners. I'm going to call this the ASIC panic and a lot of stories have been uh, going around about the ASICs and how they're a danger to the Bitcoin. I want to read a little bit of this story and then discuss this. Uh, AMC announces 4.8, uh, I guess that's terahashes, uh, Bitcoin miners for 3,000 BTC. Yesterday, AMC announced they will be joining the ranks of ASIC miner, Avalon, Butterfly Labs, and KNC as an ASIC chip manufacturer 
Two days ago, Active Mining Corporation posted they had a large announcement and would be pre preceding it by selling 2 million shares for 0 0.0025 bitcoins each, totaling 5,000 BTC. As many advocates had predicted, the announcement was the preliminary results of their ASIC chip development. The self-proclaimed world's fastest Bitcoin mining chip will use 20 nanometer technology estimated to run at 16 to 20 gigahashes per second. This is an estimated 70 times increase over Avalon's 280 megahash chips that would start that should start shipping next month. AMC expects low rate initial production to start Q4 2013 and ramp up full rate production Q1 2014. So I wanted to talk about this controversy now they've talked about on it on let's talk Bitcoin the issue of is this a danger uh, are the ASIC miners a threat to Bitcoin and, and the issue being will there be a 51 percent violation and a hard fork and and some of the solutions proposed one of the ideas was that supposedly Satoshi's vision was that it was one CPU, one vote. Now, I have to say, as a free market person, to me, that is just a stupid, one of the stupidest ideas you could come up with. Uh, a free market is not a democracy. A free market is about one dollar, one vote, or one Bitcoin, one vote. In other words, uh, the prices in a free market are determined by uh, the economic strength of the players now uh, barring some sort of monopolistic control and a lack of competition that's something that is beneficial to everyone and I think that uh, we're seeing that with the rise of the all these companies involved in the ASIC miners so if we would have stayed with this idea of one CPU one vote which obviously couldn't even be implemented because there are CPUs that are i7s, there are CPUs that are Celeron, so that's not even possible. You'd have uh, differences in CPUs, and uh, that's something that uh, is just speculative. It doesn't even make any sense. But even if that were the case, that uh, uh, they had limited it to some type of CPU democracy, then obviously we would not have ever had this type of technological development with the ASIC miners. Now, you know, initially the Bitcoin was mined by a CPU and the mining was built right into the client. Then, of course, once the GPU miners came on board, for those of you who don't know, the GPUs are basically uh, video cards designed for gamers. And it was just a, a matter of coincidence they found out that these were much more suited to uh, doing the hashing functions than CPUs were. So the market became dominated by these GPUs and CPUs were pretty much pushed out. Now with the ASIC miners coming out, uh, the GPUs are being pushed out. But again, if it had just been limited to CPUs, then in my mind, uh, that, that would have been a, a very large danger. It would have been much more possible uh, for some group to assemble a larger number of CPUs than what was out there. So I, I completely disagree with that. But let's look at the economics of it. Let's look at the blockchain information here. Now, I want to point out a couple of charts here. The first one I pointed out last time is the hash rate. And I was pointing out the discrepancy between the hash rate and the price of the Bitcoin, you can see that the hash rate is still on a tremendous spike right now. And that makes perfect sense with all of the new technology coming on board. But if we go and look at miners revenue, we can see that is actually correcting back to uh, the beginning of the massive breakout. And an even worse chart is going to be mining operating margin. Now, this chart is going to be the cost of mining Bitcoins. I believe that's going to be calculated based on the revenue and the price of Bitcoin. So you can see the graph 
showing miners revenue minus estimated electricity and bandwidth costs. So when we add these three together and think about this, the ASIC miners coming on has tremendously increased the hash rate. But the miners revenue and the mining operating margin is rapidly falling. Now, probably initially there were some of the early ASIC miners. My guess is that they probably found it more profitable to hang on to those machines and just mine and make a larger profit uh, just mining bitcoins and then and then ship them later. But now with the rush being on with a large number of companies rushing into this ASIC mining with the miners revenue falling with the mining operating margin even becoming worse it's going to be in the interest of these companies to push out and deliver these machines as quickly as they can and of course as they improve uh, it's going to make the others obsolete so this is exactly how the free market works and uh, I don't think there's any danger in this. I think that the Bitcoin is operating exactly how it was designed. It's just that no one could have foreseen that uh, there would have been this acceleration in technology for mining. That's a good thing. I think once this ASIC mining technology is, is fully deployed, and I'm sure there will be a technology after this that uh, even increases it much faster. Uh, there's just going to be more power to the Bitcoin network, more distribution. I don't see this as any kind of problem or threat. Uh, now, the Winklevoss twins, on the other hand, this to me could be a very, very large threat to the Bitcoin because this could be a diversion from the money that normally would flow into Bitcoin, could flow into some type of ETF holding pool where it never actually touches bitcoins hopefully the winklevoss twins are going to uh, be above board and honest and uh, have an open book on everything and have a technology where people can verify that they actually are invested in certain bitcoins and they aren't uh, in essence double spent or double invested and uh, there isn't uh, a rehypothecation of bitcoins and uh, so we're going to watch the Bitcoin chart here. It's interesting that we're starting to find a bottom with these new stories coming out. Uh, money is flowing back onto Mt. Gox apparently now that they've opened back up and we're having a fairly strong rally. If this is the bottom, I will expect, and again, that confirmation will probably be given on this daily chart. I expect a confirmation of the rally to be around 90 or $100. If that's the case, then I expect to run up to test that 170, and eventually we're going to test that 266 high. And we'll talk to you next time.